thing wasn't really working properly. <laughs> no. All right, what's up, you guys? Uh, this is my friend Corey, and I haven't seen him in so long. He used to get a fade like all the time, and he's grown his hair out till he looks like a hippie. So anyhow, he's got a job, a uh, new job. Is that what it is? Yeah. So he's got a new job he's starting here, and he doesn't want to go in there looking like this. So he's giving me free range to do what I want. So I got some ideas on how we're going to preserve some length on the top. We're going to give him a nice fade on the back and sides. And I'm going to start this out by using one of my Zuka neck guards here, which has never even been opened. Since he's got to go back to work, I don't want him getting all uh, any hair underneath the cape. So I'm going to put this on him here, and this will keep him hair free. So much hair, dude. I should have started by shaving the sides before I even put this thing on. Super thick on the sides. Yeah, man. All right, first, let's uh, go ahead and comb it out, section it. Let's see. We're gonna deploy what I call the faded acronym here. So the first was to find out what the client wants. He's open to anything. So the second is to analyze the hair and adapt the plan to it. So right now, I haven't cut his hair in a while and um, I wanna make sure that I'm not missing anything. I need to make certain things, I need to make sure I leave certain hair long and by kind of combing this out and looking all through it, I can get a better sense of exactly what I need to do here. So I can also tell that if I cut this too close, this is gonna stand up. I'm getting a lot of information just by looking at the top of his head here. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually gonna just go ahead and I'm gonna section him off just below the parietal ridge here. Since I have so much hair to work with, I would rather just go ahead and kind of section this off. Now my next goal here is to kind of decide like exactly what I want to do. It's going to be really hard for me to see what I'm doing. So I'm just going to start out with some clipper over comb. And all I'm really going to do here is just kind of remove some bulk. So we will grab a wide clipper comb. Love these combs. These are the Zuka combs. They're just really flexible and they're very skinny. So they're very easy to work with. And let's go ahead and get rid of some of this this stuff off the side so I could at least see what I'm doing better. And we'll work our way down here. So this is a good opportunity for you guys to practice clipper over comb. Somebody walks in, wants a dramatic transformation like this. I mean, this is, this is a good time for you guys to just get some practice in. Practice taking off just a little bit. You know, see, see how your, your hair reacts to it and you know, build your skill set. Once I do this, what I'm probably actually going to do is I'm gonna go ahead and cut the top because like when somebody goes from really sh long hair to really short hair, that long hair has been weighing it down for a long time. So it's, it's probably gonna weigh a little bit differently than you expect. So I'm just gonna kind of approach this with a little bit more caution than normal. You know, if he was like a completely, if he was just like a retouching client, like a client that comes in like every, every month, two months, it would have been, you know, I would have approached this completely different, but being that this is such a dramatic transformation, I'm gonna approach it just a little bit different. So you see me jumping right into my phase two, which is clipper over comb, just mainly to use it as a bulk removing stage. So phase one and phase two are both, they're both bulk removing phases. So I'm not really doing anything too complicated just yet. I'm just getting rid of some of this hair. Now my neck guard should stay on a little bit easier. And he probably hasn't felt no hair on the sides in a while. So I bet you, I bet you that feels pretty wild. <laughs> so, all right. Before I get started on my blend, I really want to make like a nice connection from the, the sides to the top. So I'm going to go ahead and start by cutting the top. So I'm going to spray a little bit of Code B. What this is, is this just has some hemp seed oil in it. And uh, 90, 90, it's 90% water, 10% hemp seed oil. And it's just gonna help kind of prep the hair. So I already know, I don't wanna take a crazy amount off the top here. Like I wanna, I wanna hopefully like in the end, I can, I'm, I can almost envision a style where I create like a little bit of volume on top and blow dry it back. So with that being said, we're gonna take like half of this off, 
but I want to keep some weight that'll allow me to do that. So starting with that Mohawk guideline down the center. And in this case, because we're going to style the hair back, I'm not too worried about like his bangs. He's not going to wear it forward. So I can include that in my Mohawk section. You guys are going to see how much easier this uh, guideline is going to be to follow because we're going from so long to so short. So all I've done here is I created my Mohawk guideline in the center. Nothing too complicated. Just worked it all the way back beyond the crown. So now what I'm going to do, this hair in the middle is my guide. I'm going to just move off of the edge of my guide slightly. So what I can do is just section this off so you can see nice little neat sections. And as I comb this up, you're going to see the really short hair and the really long hair. I'm not really worried about moving down the side of his head just yet. I'm just going to keep moving back right alongside my guideline. And as I do that, what's going to happen is I'm going to expand my guideline. It's going to get a little bit wider. So now my guideline's about this wide. Now I'm going to take it to the right side of his head. Same thing. One of the main things you want to keep in mind here is to direct it out to 90 degrees. So 90 degrees just means straight out from where it grows. So if I pick up a section from here and I hold it down here and cut it, that's not 90 degrees. A lot of that hair is being directed, which means that it's going to be directed off its base and it's going to be longer than it should be. So now that my guide has gotten to about this wide, now I can begin kind of starting to work it down the sides. And all I need to do is make sure that I'm holding it out to 90 degrees. I can see where my guide is and I'm transferring it down the head. If you ever get confused about what 90 degrees is, just think of the shape of the scalp. All it does is mimic the same shape as the scalp. So as long as my fingers, as long as they sort of mirror his scalp, um, then you know you're at 90 degrees. So like right here, this is what I wanted to be able to see. Like I wanted to be able to see like how, how was this gonna lay? Like what kind of fight am I gonna have there? And being that I left it long enough, I know I'm going to be good. See, if I had gone into the back and sides with like a number two, might have been too short. I might have created, you know, problems for myself. And now I've created a, a situation where I'm going to be able to make sure I blend that out before I get to that area. Which is the whole reason why I started by cutting the top first. Normally, um, cutting the top is phase three. That would be, you know, sort of like phase one would be just removing bulk, preparing for the skin line, which we're going to go through right now. Phase two would be clipper over comb, which we're still going to go through as a follow-up to that. And then phase three would have been cutting the top um, if I was using scissors. Now, if I was just removing bulk like on the top, if he'd came in and been like, oh, I want a two on top, then I would have done that during phase one also. But being that I'm using scissors, that's what this is for. Now, I know a lot of this is going to wind up getting cut shorter. So I'm not too, I'm not too worried about um, trying to blend it in just yet. All I'm really trying to do right now is just follow my guideline from the top and move it down. All right, now that we got that done, what I think I'm actually going to do is I'm going to run the blow dryer uh, just a little bit. I'm going to try blow drying it back so I can sort of see, like get an idea of the style that I'm trying to create here. So I got my Gamma Hybrid. This actually has some analog buttons on it. It makes it a little smaller than the XL. This thing kicks out a ton of heat though, and it's super small and super lightweight. So all I'm doing is directing this hair back. You guys can hear how quiet this blow dryer is. I'm sure you could probably still hear me talking pretty well. So I have the heat all the way turned up. I have the fan all the way turned up on the blow dryer. And I'm blow drying it back. And I'm going to try to kind of lift it up just a touch.
trying to go against any of like the grain patterns that I can get to make it sort of stand up a little bit. Now when you do this, you want to keep it as hot as possible on the hair until you have it completely dry. Once you have it completely dry, I'm going to start pulling in that cool button and that's really going to help set the hair in place where I want it. So this is cool. So this gives me a really rough idea of how I plan to style it on top. And now we can go ahead and we can start with the back and sides. We can actually start by putting in um, some guidelines. I have an idea of what's going to happen on top. I know we got a lot to remove on the back and side still. Uh, so right now I'm going to continue sort of working my process just in different ways because the six phases was never designed to be used um, in order, actually. It was just designed as a way to communicate to you each of the different techniques. So now I think it makes a lot of sense to start building that connection into the top. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to use my clipper over comb to do that process. And I'm just going to get rid of some of this bulk. Keep in mind, this is not going to make it perfect. This is not really going to do um, everything you need it to do just yet. But what we're trying to do here, now that I can sort of see my style, I got it laying back. We're trying to figure out like what length do I have to leave this so that I can do my fade into that length, you know, so that I can get that to blend into the top as well. It's all about being careful. So with the clipper over comb, I'm gonna slide the I'm gonna slide the clipper. I'm gonna slide my comb in, just lift out a little bit, and I'm just looking. Like you see me moving kind of fast, and that's just because I've mastered this. I can do this really fast. You don't have to do this fast. Like watch how slow I can I can move. I don't have to move fast at all. In fact, I think a lot of you guys who are new charging in here trying to do it fast are making a huge mistake. Like you, you don't have to move fast to do it accurately. Like you want to come up with a good result. You want to build some confidence. You want to get your reps in. You know, just just take it easy. Take a little bit off at a time, and see what effect that has. All right, so that right side, I built that connection into the top really nicely. On this left side, we're gonna do the same thing. Just taking off a little bit here, getting rid of some of them long ones, some of them stuff that are not connected to the sides just yet. I'm gonna keep on kind of like combing it towards the style that I wanna do. Now I can see, in order to kind of keep what we got going, I could sort of see exactly where I need to put my skin line, exactly what type of haircut I want to go for. And I'm, I'm almost even considering doing a taper because I think it's going to help him preserve a little bit more um, length on the top. So, you know, like I'm, I'm just thinking here, like if I get this fade done really nice in here and I can fade off a lot of this hair on the back, we can preserve a little bit more hair here and that's just gonna make his hair look better. It's gonna make it flow better. So I think I'm gonna kind of opt towards like a, like a higher taper, just based on what I'm seeing here on the head. And being that I got free range, I think he's cool with that, right? I'm just gonna throw like a tiny bit of lava clay in here. And uh, this is from Johnny B. You'll feel this heat up in your hands. I don't know why, it heats up like 20 degrees when you break it up. Um, but I just want it to kind of go into the style that I'm working on. So I just want like a little light dusting of product. His hair is really fine and it just kind of like wants to fly away all over the place. So this is going to give me like a little bit of control as I do this. And for some reason, like whenever I do a taper, I don't know, I kind of I kind of like to just sort of go around the ear and sort of set like my parameters, like exactly where I want to blend that out. So I'll kind of just pick up my cyborgs here. These are probably the most gentle tool on the face of the earth. And I have these soft set. These are, these are not my extremely close cutting trimmers. They're, they do still cut fairly close, but they're just super gentle and they remove bulk pretty easily for me. 
So that's just giving me like a rough outline of exactly where I want to go. And uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take his taper like on the higher side because I want to see it. So I'm going to take it up from about the top of his C cup here to about the top of his ear. So I'm going to do that with the clipper in the open position. It's just going to give me a little bit more um, room to work with. And I'm going to use the C motion to kind of flick out. Now doing this does a couple of things for me. One, it preserves some of my edge up, which I want to I wanna do a nice edge up on him at the end. I didn't want to wipe that entirely away. And two, it sort of steepens my blend and begins creating that blend into all that area where I've already kind of worked. So I haven't really done anything other than manipulate the clipper out this way some, and then I started to lower it down little by little towards the bottom. So it sort of looked like this in the first few steps. I was all the way out here, and then little by little I started to lower it down, and now I'm gonna start to play with the lever some. So now I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna close the lever all the way. And I'm just using the corner to kind of push up in there just a little bit higher. And I'm sort of trying to stay away from the very front of his, his hairline. Just kind of using a corner to sort of hook in there. I'll follow up underneath that with the soft set trimmer the sideboard. Again, just kind of using the corner because I want to preserve that front part of the edge up. Let's follow up underneath with the Uno 2.0, follow up underneath. You know, if you weren't like comfortable with using a razor around the ears like I'm going to, you could literally take the Uno and just put it right in here. And look how good of a job it, it really does of just like picking up those hairs. It won't cut long hair. So like I could literally push this into the side of the head. Uh, so you could literally just follow up right where you went with your trimmer and you could still get like a barber finish. So now let's see if we can use a little trimmer over comb. And I just want to set my comb in lift it out on the angle that I think the blend should go and begin kind of just cutting that hair off that sticks out. See this comb being so flexible, I kind of knew that it would, it would help me to use it. These are Zuka combs. They're the same company that makes the neck guard. That's Philip Wolf. And if you guys want to use my code, you guys can save a good amount of money off of these um, there'll be a link in the description for them. We can see right the rough edge right where we left off with our first couple of steps. Uh, so I now have a number one on. I'm going to open it two clicks, and I'm going to start to flick into that upper length. You know, your taper is not always going to, um, your process to get your taper done is not always going to be the same on both sides of the head. It really just depends on how much hair the client has on one side versus the other, you know, how, how fine it, it is, how thick it is. Some people's hair, when they start to go gray, it's, it's different colors. Like there's, there's a lot of different factors that could make you have to do your work a little bit different. So you can see that did a pretty good job of building that connection into the top. I can see a little bit of residual there. I'm using my tight guards from Stylecraft right now. These are, these are super secure double magnetic guards and uh, they make this process super easy. So I just put on my half guard, and this is gonna be the exact same, this is gonna give you the same cut as the wall half guard. The difference being that it has two magnets that secure it to the back, which makes it really nice to know that it's just not gonna fall off. Anybody who's ever used the wall half guard, especially the first one, the gray one, yo, those things were notorious for popping off. And if you had that happen in the wrong situation, it could get awkward. I used to actually even hold my finger on the tab every time I used it. Now, you know, with, with the magnets, I, I don't even really worry about it. So now we're just gonna finesse it a little bit. I'm just using the corner. I got the clipper completely open. We got our X Instinct clipper rocking. I love this clipper, y'all. 
It just makes blending super easy. And while I got him kind of like all in focus here with this with this particular part of the haircut, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna I'm gonna do some of the edge up on this side. So as you direct the client like each way, like when I have him tip his head out this way, like it shows me more because the way the light hits his head. So if you guys haven't seen one of my last videos where I talked about how important lighting is, like the last thing you want to do is let a client leave the shop without a perfect haircut. And how are you going to make the haircut perfect if you can't see it? I've dropped some lighting options down below if you guys need to check that out. But don't overlook that, y'all. It's not possible to do good haircuts if you can't see what you're doing. Imagine he came in here, it's like 6.30 in the morning. If he came in here and it's pitch dark in here, I just tried to cut his hair with no light. How well do you think that would turn out? I bet he wouldn't pay for that shit. <laughs> All right, I really like the um, blend itself. It's looking really good there. So we're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna grab my Instinct trimmer. So I have not put any hairspray in here or anything. These are my, my zero gap trimmers. These are like really, um, these are my jujitsus, man. So you'll see why I use these. I absolutely love this black X-Pro blade on here. And these things just make doing edge ups so easy and so fast. Yeah, right now I'm really starting to kind of, I'm, I'm starting to kind of like the, the fact that I did a taper here. I think this is going to give his hair some time to relax. I'm going to go in there with some sheer over comb and I'm going to really get that laying nice. But I love the way that's looking. That's showing off a, a nice blend there. Let's uh, jump over to the other side and we'll sort of repeat the process. But you know, like I said, the funny thing about the process is it, is it really could change from side to side. You, you never know. So... Let's see how this side reacts and what differences there'll be. Jesus, you got so much hair, I almost fell and broke my neck. <laughs> I'm stepping on a pile of hair that's like a foot long over here. All right, so we're gonna begin this kind of the same. I use my, my trimmer and my Zuka comb to kind of get, get some of this long stuff out of the way. And then I kind of want to define the area I'm working in. So I'll begin kind of edging them up around the ear some. On this side, I could tell uh, the hair is a little thinner. So I actually can see the blend kind of coming together a little quicker on this side, possibly. This is just something you kind of learn with experience and with reps. I mean, the best barber tool you really have is actually your eyes. And, you know, I could give you guys an ironclad process. I can, I can teach you everything that I know, right? But at the end of the day, if you don't learn to follow your instincts, follow your eyes, you're, you're going you're gonna to struggle. This is why, like, no AI, no machine is going to ever take our jobs. They'll never be able to program in all the things that I just went through here. As you can see, like, I started off this haircut thinking that I was going to possibly do a skin fade. But then I realized, like, some of his hair is kind of fine on top. And I just, I just felt like, actually, that this is a better option. And you know, all the steps that it's gonna take for me to create this, this look, there'll never be an AI machine that can, that can do this. I guarantee you that. So all right, here we go. We're starting out with some clipper manipulation. We have it tipped off the side of the head. And what that does is that really softens up that connection to the top. Like as you can see, probably at like some salons, this would be considered a taper already, It'd probably be considered done. They'd be charging him and tossing him out the window. But, you know, here, we're gonna go ahead and start angling the clipper down now. Have not touched the lever. I mean, and, and honestly, like, the amount of blending that, that takes place when you manipulate your clipper the correct way, it's, it's kind of amazing. It, it has always been a surprise to me, and it's always been a surprise to me that not a lot of barbers really talk about that. So, 
We've begun the blend there. We got a pretty good thing going. And now we're gonna start moving our lever. So I'll take this one from the top down. I'll just close it literally one click and just kind of go through there. Maybe I'll, clo I'll close it two, depending on the change that I'm getting. Like I'm following my eyes. My eyes are telling me exactly what to do. Like I could see that there's some long hairs right here that uh, are gonna have to get cut shorter. So I'm trying to carefully do that without creating too much work for me in the upper sections. So we gotta make sure, you know, that we're not making extra work for ourselves, but also we gotta follow our eyes. Like our eyes are, are the thing that's gotta tell you, okay, yeah, I do gotta take that up a little higher. Okay, yeah, I do gotta, I do gotta kinda fight with that area some more. One of the things I try to do in my class is like, I, I try to tell you guys how to self-diagnose. That's why we do all the fade triangles. That's why we do all the fade diagrams and stuff. So, you know, at the end of my class, you guys would like to come to me and be like, hey, um, you know, I think it's a number one that'll get this line out, do you? And I'm like, well, look at your, look at your fade diagram. This isn't rocket science. It's either the step above or it's the step below. So, you know, you could, you could reason that out yourself. Because I'm not trying to teach you guys, or I'm not trying to give you guys a, a fish and feed you for a day here, so to speak. Like, I'm, I'm trying to teach you guys how to self-diagnose and how to be efficient barbers. So I guess this is a pretty good time for me to tell you guys about the master class. Soon, we'll be sell we'll be Soon we will be selling a three-hour master class and only 30 tickets. It's going to be intense, hands-on learning. And I guarantee you guys are going to learn a ton of stuff at this class. We're going to be putting this on and in the price of the ticket, it's going to be about 300 bucks in the price of the ticket. You're going to be getting some great machines and some big discounts on some other stuff. And there's this, this whole thing is starting to come together behind the scenes and I'm getting really excited here. So I think the very first one is probably going to be in Georgia. We're looking at the Atlanta area right now. So if you happen to be in that area and you're watching these videos, just, just stay tuned. That's a class that you do not want to miss. All right, that's looking pretty good for a baseline, just with, you know, trimmer, electric shaver, and, and, and um, open taper, close taper. So uh, let's go ahead and chip into this with the number one. Let's see if that finishes it off or if we'll need the half guard. So some a lot of people don't understand that I'm going to make abundantly clear in that class is, is what is the length of your actual guards? Is there any overlap? Why does the half guard give you so much trouble? And, and the answer is the half guard has actually some overlap in the fact that if you're using a half guard open, it's actually gonna cut closer than a one guard closed. So I know it's a little bit difficult to understand, but when you see it in the charts, it would make a lot more sense. And that's why I avoid the half guard um, oftentimes until the very end of my haircut. Like, I'm not trying to pick it up and make extra work for myself. So now I got the half guard on, two clicks open, because if you understand the triangle, you'll know that this is really the only length um, that it that it does well. About two clicks open to almost closed. There's not a whole lot you can do with a half guard actually. When it's fully closed, it actually cuts closer than an open taper. When it's fully open, it's actually longer than a one guard. So the functionality of it, like you'll start to understand that a little better when you see those triangles. All right, that's pretty good. We we're able to build that connection the way we wanted to, so now it's time to do the detailing. Just using the corner. Clippers fully open. I'm lift, tip, flick. I'm manipulating out and in. Like whatever I gotta do to get this right. So like right now I'm kinda adding them all together. Like one, one, I'm lifting out, two, I'm tipping, and three, I'm only using the corners. So. I'm using sort of all three of the techniques to kind of go through there and pinpoint those problem areas. You know, like right here, I'm not in love with that spot yet. I just, just needs a little bit more before I could be like, okay, yeah, yeah, that's, that's how I want it to look. That is how I want it to look right there. That looks really good. So right here, I can see that I need to blend that a little bit better couple ways I could approach that. I could pick up a clipper guard, which I really um, haven't yet. Like I haven't hit them with a two or a one or anything like that. Or uh, I could probably just set in this comb 
find the right angle to set this comb in and cut some of this off, which is, which is how I'm gonna try to do it. I love using clipper over comb for things like this. And as you can see, like this comb's a little big to get into that area. So that's why Zuka has another comb. And I'm actually gonna switch to trimmer over comb. So like right here, you're gonna see that it's a little bit easier for me to get to that spot. I can also, also lift up. I can also lift up and go kind of horizontal with it. Sometimes that'll break up the section a little bit. And that's looking pretty good, y'all. We'll come in this way a little bit because sometimes that's just the way the hair grows. I know you guys have done tapers. I know some of you guys have seen um, some growth patterns. They come down this way a lot of times and that's just how it goes. All right, y'all, we got the sides built and let's do the, let's do the back. So the back's gonna be a little bit different because we're gonna, we're gonna put in a rainbow guideline. How many times have you guys went to do the back of somebody's taper and, and when you came down to do the lines, they were completely uneven? Um, don't lie, you know it's happened to you, it's happened to a lot of us, and that's, that's just how it could be sometimes. So I'm gonna show you guys how to avoid that whole thing. Have you looked down a little bit, bro? And uh, yeah, we're gonna get to work here. Matter of fact, I'm gonna start this with a one in the open position, and my goal is to kind of build out that rainbow guideline. So in the center, I'm gonna go up fairly high, and I'm working my way out, creating that rainbow shape. Now this isn't even as close to um, how short I'm gonna wind up going because I really want this to look like a nice blowout. I really wanna see that big transition from, from skin into that length. So now you can see his growth patterns kinda of go in different directions, which is kinda of why I wanted to do this with a one. I wanted to give myself some room, especially around the edges where it's gonna grow funny and get that to lay down pretty good. So now I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna close my one. And I'm just trying to go against the grain. And if against the grain means that I have to have this clipper upside down sometimes, then, then that's what I'm gonna do. All right, so you guys can see that rainbow shape. What that does is that preserves all this hair right here for when I do my final edge up into his neck. Um, secondly, now I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna probably try to use some clipper over comb to see if I can get that blend. Um, to finesse all the way out. If that works, that'll be great. That might not work entirely, so I might have to go into some guards, which is fine. That's what they're there for. Um, but I'm just gonna lift this up on the angle that I think the blend should be. I'm gonna cut the hair that sticks out, and then I'm gonna pull that comb away, and I'm gonna have a look. So like right there, I really like how that blended in the center. I might not get that on the sides, but we'll try. So we'll lift it out, and you see how this comb is super flexible? It really makes this pretty easy. I tip this on whatever angle I want, and I can literally make it bend and flex right against his head. And that's, that's honestly so much easier than, than trying to use a guard there. So we'll go over to right here. Try not to get in the way of my camera here. Normally I wouldn't stand off to the side just quite like this, but we'll begin removing that bulk. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna try to set this in. You can see this is gonna be a trouble spot because there's a colic right there. So I'm just gonna lift it up, you know, kind of, kind of a little bit different with the comb. This is one of the advantages to using a comb is I can kind of lift it up and direct it out any way that I want. And I gotta say, I got a pretty good result coming from a number one. And one of the reasons why is the, the back of this comb is probably about as skinny as a number one. You know, when you're doing clipper over comb, you wanna know about how, how wide the back of your comb is. Some combs are a little thicker. Like if you're using these, these wall, um, cutting combs, these are probably about a 1.5, so they're not gonna get you as close. You can see the difference, and they're not nowhere near as flexible, so it's not gonna be as easy as it was for me. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take my, my soft set trimmer, and I'm gonna start to tie in my parameters a little bit. So I'm gonna go back around this, this area where I didn't get all that hair off the ear just yet. 
I could lift this up with some trimmer over comb, which would be easier to fit that in. And my goal here is actually to preserve as much of his hairline um, as I can, because like if it grows back quick, that's that's gonna not make it look good. I want this to look good for as long as I can I can make it. If I cut all the way in here, because he, he's he's actually got a lot of hair. It grows really far outside of the sides of his neck, right? So I could easily cut this all the way in here, and it would look good, like for the camera and everything. But like in a couple of days, it wouldn't look so good. So on this side, we'll just take a very, very small. What's cool about this is this is going to kind of set up. This is going to kind of set up those hooks so that they both can kind of come in pretty evenly towards the bottom. Now I've sort of I've sort of defined where I'm going to work. So now let's get to work on actually creating the the blend of the taper. So I got this all the way in the open position. I got my camera kind of tipped sideways. Let me try to fix that, y'all. All right, I got my open taper going here. And I'm gonna kind of repeat the same sort of process. I'm gonna go up sort of high in the center. And I'm, I'm also lifting this clipper off kind of like this. I don't have it completely flat yet. Here, when I do this, you'll see it's going against the grain because of that growth pattern he has right there. So if you see that, that hair is gonna wind up looking super short because I'm holding it flat as I do that. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Now I'm just gonna use the corner kind of create that blend. You know, this is where the roadmap runs out. This is where the technique runs out and the artistry has to take over because, you know, he's got a couple different growth patterns here. So I wanna, I wanna handle each one of them in, in kind of their own way. Which it really, it sounds harder than it is. It's, it's really not that hard. It just takes a little bit of practice. You know, uh, and you see how I changed up my approach. I'm gonna put on the 1.5 in the open position, and I'm gonna see if I can get this area right here, where this growth pattern's a little funny. Let's see if I can get that laying a little better by chipping into it with this. Just using the corner. You know, it's all just a repeat of the same sort of steps. Using the corner, lift, tip, and flick. You can do that with a guard on. I especially like how short these teeth are on the tight guards compared to their, their previous 1.5. It sort of makes detailing and doing stuff like this a little bit easier. And that's why you get the tight guards with, with some of the clippers now. The sideboard comes with the blue ones. I believe the Instinct came with the, with the red ones. The X Instinct came with the red ones. And um, they sell them separately on the website as well. This is well worth the money if you guys don't have a set of these, these tight guards. Even if you're using different clipper brands, you know, they fit wall, they fit most Babyliss tools, they fit, uh, there's, just, there's a lot of brands that they fit that use like the wall two hole system. So as you guys can see that that 1.5 was, was kind of it, man. That, that did a really nice job of laying down those two, those two trouble areas. I think I can handle whatever's left with some, some shear over comb. And that looks, that looks pretty good. I'm, ha I'm happy with that. So now we, we just got to get this all the way down to skin. So now I'm going to begin closing this up all the way. Again, just using the corner to kind of feather into the area I was just in. Like if I can make the skin like look like, like it pops a little bit more right here. That'll take away from the trouble areas on the sides. That looks dope. Again, I can follow up with the Uno to make it easier when I shave it. So now we're gonna kind of head into like sort of like the final 
details. We'll use the razor. We'll get them lined up, and we're even going to do some enhancements. So one of the ways that I like to really kind of like get all these details correct is I like to use some shear over comb. And that's, that's what we're gonna do here. So anywhere that I sort of see mismatched long hair, dark spots, stuff like that, uh, that's what we're gonna go to. And we're gonna, go, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna blend them all out. So combing and pulling the hair down into the style that I wanna see, it kind of exposes areas that I need to go to. Like right here, I could sort of see this area, I could see right there. Uh, so we're just gonna run through this real quick. Won't take long to, to get this to lay down better. So I know some of you guys are probably out there like, why don't you use the texturizing shears? Don't you got texturizing shears? Yeah, I do, and I will. But as of right now, I really like to do it with the regular shears. This helps me pinpoint a little bit more what I'm doing. So right now, this is like a texturizing step where I'm just breaking up the section, creating some texture in it. And that's gonna help it lay down better. Everything that you do with your texturizing shears, you can pretty much do with your regular shears um, if you know how. This is called shear point tapering. I'll pick it up right in my taper section. Now I really don't have a ton to do like this, but a lot of times I use the tip of the blade on my shears. And sometimes this could be really helpful with breaking up them short sections if you had some stuff that just wasn't blending well there which in this case I really don't, but that happens sometimes. So, you know, I'm, I'm not above using that. And you guys have seen me use that many times. Now that's starting to come together nice. It's starting to, I wanna comb it in the direction that I want. And now I can pick up my texturizing shears. So with my texturizing shears out, now I can kind of go right to the areas that, you know, the curls laying a little different. It could be thinned out and be laying a little better and moving a little bit more into the direction I want it to. Right here behind the ear, still like a touch thick. I try to do everything I could with, with all the other techniques before I got there. And that's, that's laying way better. Take a little bit, step back, look. Take a little bit, step back, look. That's, that's kind of the name of the game here. I have it all combed this way so that I'll be able to lift it up kind of against the grain, especially here in this, this little growth pattern area. When I'm doing shear, and over, shear over comb, when I'm doing shear over comb, I'm usually focused on the bottom part of the comb because it's the only way to really cut hair with no tension and get it out to 90 degrees with no tension. So I just ran through that and I got that to lay way better just with my regular shears. I don't even really feel like I have anything to do with these texturizing shears on this side. So if there's anywhere that you have in your sections, you guys can go ahead and clean them up. But that right side, that left side looks really good to me. So now we'll just clean up the back. We're pretty much getting there, y'all. Only a little bit more to do now. We're just gonna do some enhancements. I'll put in some product, style it up a little bit. So now like in the back, it's pretty important that you have your client look down a little bit because that's gonna expose any, any of these like trouble areas. So there, there might be a case where I'll go back to the clippers possibly. Um, but I'm going to try to do this with my shear over comb method first. So I can get really specific and I can hold it directly against the grain. And actually, I got to say that's, that's working out quite nice. I think I'll still go back to like a number two, see if I can polish that up just a touch. But... Something satisfying about that sound of the 
Sure, we're calling you just. All right, these rebels are set back just a little bit more. And they move a little bit slower. So like right now with some detailing, that's kind of what I'm looking for. I'm not looking for something that'll that'll wipe out a huge section or, or, or create me any trouble. Just rocking that C motion, getting that to lay down. Again, like I feel like I'm only using a couple of the teeth. Even though this is longer, it really doesn't change um, the way that I'm doing this. Let's use the razor, line them up, then we're gonna throw some enhancements in here. We'll style them up, it'll be looking good. Now remember, his hair was like two feet long when he got here. I bet he's feeling awful, <laughs> awful light right now. <laughs> Uh, we're gonna use a little bit of the Johnny B shave gel. It's white, but it really lubricates the hair nice and the skin nice, unless it glide. Probably go ahead and do your eyebrows too a little bit while I'm at it. You ain't got a huge separation between your eyebrows beginning and your sideburns anymore. All right, so we'll go ahead, we'll go around his ear. I'm just using the tip of the blade. This is really gonna let me be accurate. Using a blade around the ear is like, it's like the best way to just tie it all in, man. Like down here, there ain't no hair, so we're good there. I'm gonna start by taking the tip of the blade up here pulling in, and that's gonna kinda of get it sort of like across the gra grain slash against the grain. But I got some ideas that are gonna, that are gonna make his hair look really nice there once we get to the enhancement part. So I jump on over to this side here. I got a little bit on the back of my hand. I can tell I don't think I used the trimmer on this uh, on this side, but it doesn't really make a difference. I'm gonna go back with the trimmer anyways. Maybe look down a little bit. So now's where we wanna really make sure that we get both these sides to show up as nice and even. And I'm just gonna kinda follow the lines I established with my soft set trimmer, the cyborg. Razor sucks, it's a level three razor, it's already dead. Barely got any use out of that. I don't know man, a lot of these razors, some of them, some of them just ain't no good. The ghost razors, man, that's where it was at. Those ghost razors, I need to get some more. Only Fort Worth Barber Supply sells them, but they're, they're literally the best razor I ever used. Every single one of them was super sharp. Level three is normally not too bad, though. I mean, I'd say they're a close second to that. Let me tip you this way a little bit. That's better. I 
I mean, a lot of a lot of people will tell you to use a reverse backhand here, you know, and it's it's all really depending on what what you're trying to create, what your style. Like in this case, I'm trying to tie two sides in, so I'm trying to get it in there the best I can to make both those sides look really even when it comes down. This side, if you're right-handed, you'll find easier. Because you'll be able to just set your right hand right in there. There's always a way to hold the razor um, to get it in there. Like sometimes it'll involve you tipping your client this way, because I want to follow this up against the grain. All right, that looks pretty good, y'all. I'll uh, probably have like a minor adjustment to make there, um, but that looks that looks really solid. So now, let's decide what we're gonna do in the front here. Because when I put some enhancements in, I wanna I wanna make his hair look like it's got a little bit more uh, hair to it. We probably could do like a small lineup in the front. What do you think, bro? Yeah, do you think? I think it looked good. You know, his his hairline is is not really that bad, y'all. It's been like this for a long time, matter of fact. Um, but he, he's not losing hair going back this way. It's just it's just a little bit thinner up here. So what I'm gonna do with the enhancements, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get that coverage good there. So it actually looks like I'm gonna get away with like a really nice edge up here. So just laying the comb in here, I can see that like just. Basically, this widow's peak over to here, we'll be able to get we'll be able to get it laying pretty good. Again, I did not use hairspray prior to the edge up. If you got a trimmer blade this sharp, you really don't need to do it. Sometimes I still do it. It's just like almost out of habit now. I do it. These trimmers put like a seriously sharp line in though. Normally I would tell you to stretch the skin like big time here, but we didn't take much hair. So I could pretty much like set this right in here and, and get my thing worked out. His hair is just, uh, he's got so much of it going all over the place from all that we've cut. So, just go ahead. clean him up a touch. You guys could see I'm anchoring here, here, and then on the blade. 
So I can make some like really short arcing strokes. Alright, let's blow dry them a little bit, see if that's straight. Try to get all that those loose ones off of them. A lot of times I'll go back with the trimmers and catch any like overhang after I've ran the razor. Right here we got a little bit of overhang. Doesn't mean you'll do it everywhere. It's just, you know, a little touch up here and there. All right, so you do want to make sure that you got this. You do want to make sure that you got this lineup correct, especially before we put enhancements in it. And I'm pretty happy with that. I had to fight with it a little bit more on that left side, you know, to get everything lined up. Okay, because his hair is a little lighter, it's about the same uh, as mine, really. So I'm actually going to use the K88, and this is uh, dark, warm brown. We'll use a little bit only. And then I have one of the clipper brushes here. I'm just gonna work that in just a little bit and I'm gonna kind of paint the sides of this. I don't wanna have a ton on the brush, especially when I'm, when I'm first you know, starting to do the edge up. So that's sort of step one. And then step two is, let's zoom in a little bit. Sort of step two is I wanna make sure that I got my brush, a brush that I pretty much mainly use for color. And we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna, we're gonna paint a tiny little line and then I'm gonna brush it in. When you first put it in, When you first put it in, you're gonna have time to kind of address where it is. You'll be able to kind of comb it in better. You even got time to take your razor out and make sure that it, it is a nice straight line where you put it in. So if you do that quick enough, you'll be able to even move that color over. If you let it sit too long, that color is not gonna move over at all. So that first stroke was a little bit heavy, it often is. I got some right here. But other than that, that looks really good. So we'll continue picking up hair just from the edge of this thing. That's why I kind of like using this little thing because I don't want to put too much on the brush. It's usually, usually I do that in the very beginning. Once I paint the edge of my color, my color cup, it doesn't happen as bad. What's nice about this, this will last him like three days. That's why I sort of gave up on putting it in with, with like the machines and spraying and everything because it, it just doesn't last as long that way. Looks great. We'll jump over to the other side. And then the real trick to this is, is how you're gonna do the very front edge. And I'm gonna show you guys a couple little tricks that I use for that. So repeat the process here. We can get a little bit more on our brush for that first couple of taps, cause it's gonna go through some thick hair. I'm try not to pick up so much on the back end of my brush. Tip it up 
this a little bit. Falling asleep, dog. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm just about there, yo. All right, I'm gonna do the very front, just a little bit here. I actually have a good amount on the brush. You gotta go through that longer hair. You gotta get a good amount on that brush. And you could just work it into the rest of the hair. It's really like the perfect candidate for enhancements, honestly. Cause it'll really look good on his hair. Will make a big difference in the last a couple of days. So if you get it in there thick enough right off the rip, it's just super easy to get that comb to work all the way through there so it all looks nice and even. Oh, now nah, I feel like we about to do a gender reveal on your hair. Mm -hmm. This shit was so long.
Now what I'm gonna do here with the very, with, with what's left of this, this hair color, so I'm gonna literally put it right on my hands and uh, I'm gonna just try to work it into the scalp just a little bit right here. Take my color brush, just kind of work it in. All right, that's dope. Let's go ahead and blow dry it. One last time and then we're gonna put some products in it. Basically just blow, blow drying the color in. take just a little bit of aftershave in the very front of his edge up I might have got a little bit of color just on his skin that ain't even near the edge up so we'll go ahead and we'll clean that just a little bit All right, y'all, I want like a really light, like a really light um, styling option. So we're gonna grab some of the street cream. Yeah. All right, y'all, we got a touch of the street cream. This is like a really like, it's just a really light product. It'll be perfect for his hair. Break this up. Really don't wanna put too much, so. I might even went a little bit crazy there. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. Just, just a touch. What's cool about this stuff is like once it's in his hair and it dries, his hair is just going to keep like stay pliable. It won't separate his hair too much. It won't make his hair look thin. And it shows off all that texture from the top. Yo, that is a good transformation, y'all. What you think? This is the cut. I hope y'all like it. Corey, what you think, bro? Look at that cut. <laughs> he can't even see. This is perfect, bro. This is a gender reveal. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah, that got him all back on point, y'all. His hair was like growing out for like a year. Before. Was it a year? More than that. Almost two. Almost two years I haven't seen this man. He used to be a regular client. Now he's regular again. So he'll have to maintain this, but it won't be like reinventing the wheel this time. Next time around, we'll be way faster. <laughs> but all right, you guys, this is the cut. I hope you learned something. This is the YBA where we have over 700 videos to help you learn. Subscribe if you're not already and consider the membership. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.